keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Savior and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over. Over and over again, well, he keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. He keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. And he gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Savior and I, I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He keeps on forgiving me over and over and over and over and over again. He keeps on forgiving me over and over sweeter and sweeter as the days go by oh what a love between my father and i i keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again good morning good morning good morning i was anticipating one more verse he was anticipating me getting on up. <laughs> so good to see each of you, and we just want to say, let's have a great day praising and serving our God. Just before we get started with the worship, we want to uh, keep you mindful of a couple of announcements that uh, uh, I need to share with you. Um, definitely want to keep you mindful of just around the corner on February 5th, uh, the time of the services, we're going to they're going to be changing, and we're going to have 9 o'clock Bible study and 10 o'clock worship service. And then in Lexington, we're going to switch their time from uh, what it is now to a 1 o'clock Bible study and a 2 o'clock worship service. And, and this is uh, uh, being done in great part to uh, help us to be able to support uh, in our presence uh, the congregation in Lexington and uh, help their work grow uh, there with the time change. And, uh, and so we look forward to our in-person Bible class and worship time change on the first week in February, February 5th. All right. Um, also, sisters, get ready for our annual gratitude class on next Sunday at 5 o'clock via Zoom. Uh, Sister Lisa Pittman will give the words of encouragement, and God has blessed us to see 2023, and we know you all have something uh, to share. So uh, that's next Sunday, sisters. Uh, this comes from Sister Bedingfield uh, and the, uh, the uh, women's ministry, the annual gratitude class, next Sunday at 5 o'clock. As you may know, today we are having, uh, and uh, you all look very, very nice in your in your t-shirts, and we have our uh, uh, fellowship. We're having a fellowship meal shortly after our, um, what's been called abbreviated service. Um, so I know y'all enjoying in that terminology. Amen. Amen. So to God be the glory, right? To God be the glory. Those are all the announcements. There are a couple of things I will announce at the end, but I'll make it to at the end uh, so that it'll be fresh on your mind. Um, I did see Sister Stribling set up in this room right here. If you still need to pick up uh, your T-shirts, and it seems like everybody that don't have on T-shirts, you knew the color scheme, so they are matching already. Um, let us have a great day worshiping and praising our God, and let us also uh, take this opportunity to welcome any guests that we have. Uh, just let's give all of them a love deposit at this time. 
and just before we get kicked off and, and we start praising and serving God and, and the way that we're going to do, uh, I want you to look to your left and to your right and tell your neighbor you love them and it's good to see them. Thank you. Let's have a great day of worship. Oh, oh, one more thing. Uh, Wayne and Pam, uh, we want to keep Tiffany uh, Calhoun in our prayers and the loss of a mother. Those services were yesterday. And, uh, and Wayne and Pam, they're out. Uh, uh, and uh, several of them are dealing with uh, uh, medical matters. So let's keep all of our members, relationships, friends that are dealing with situations uh, in our prayers as we go forward this day and carrying out uh, God's will in our lives. Thank you again. Enjoy your worship. Well, one more time, one more time. Well, one more time, Lord, one more time, we know we are blessed to be in God's service. One more time, oh Lord, one more time. Well, I'm so glad, I'm so glad, well, I'm so glad, I'm so glad, you know we are blessed. To be in God's service for one, one more time, oh Lord, one more time. Well, I feel good, I feel good, well, I feel good, well, so, so good. You know we are blessed to be in God's service for one more time, oh Lord, one more time. One more time, well, one more time, Lord, oh, one more time. You know we are blessed to be in that service. One more time, oh, Lord, one more time, one more time. To be in God's service for one more time, oh Lord, oh Lord, time. Let us go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you for another day you have blessed us. One more time. You have allowed us to come together. There's none like you, for you're worthy of all praise. You're worthy of all honor. All the glory belongs to you. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for another day's journey, and we're glad about it. None but thee, Lord. You're so worthy that, God, we know that you are God all by yourself. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for being God. Thank you for being my Savior. Thank you for being our Lord of Lord and God of all God. Give you the praise. No other God but you. You're worthy of all praise in the name of Jesus. Continue to have your way in this place. Let your will be done in each and every one of our lives. God, we thank you. Thank you for your Holy Ghost power. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Continue to bless us here, Lord, in this place. Touch, heal, and deliver. Bind the hands of the enemy right now. Cast out all fear, God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you right now for your word. For your word is what keeps us, God. Your word is so strong, God. We give you the glory. Thank you for your son, Jesus, dying on the cross, allowing us to have this opportunity. Continue to bless our leader, Lord. Continue to bless the man of God. Have your way in his life. Give him what to give us and help us to receive it. We give you all the praise and the glory assured in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, we that love 
the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord. And thus around the throne and thus surround the throne. Oh, we're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion, we're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God, and then those refuse to sing, who never knew our God. Children of the heavenly king, but children of the heavenly king, they speak their joys abroad and speak their joys abroad. Oh, we're marching to Zion. Zion, we're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Acts chapter 20 and verse 7 says, Upon the first day of the week, the disciples came together to break bread. This is what we're doing now. We're breaking bread. And the bread that we're about to break is in commemoration of our Lord and Savior, having his body broken, his blood shed on the cross for our sins. We know that the Lord's Supper is because of the last supper that Christ had. He took, with his disciples, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to them, and said, take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. He also took the cup gave it to them and said, drink ye all of it. This is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many, for remission of sins. And then he said, do this in remembrance of me. Let's go to God in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for this bread, which is your son's broken body. And Father, we thank you for this cup, which is your son's shed blood. We know that those are broken and shed for our behalf because of our sin. And Father, as we remember this, we ask you to bless it and bless us. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die? Sacred head for such a one as I. It was at the cross, at the cross, that's where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. And now I am happy all the day. Was it for crimes that I have done? He groaned upon the tree. Thank you. 
the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away and here was there my faith I received my sight and service which is giving or seed sowing as you see on the screen Luke 638 there's an anecdote about a village that could not grow large potatoes all the potatoes that they had were small potatoes and so this particular farm agent came by to help them and he asked them well what do you never get big potatoes? And they said, yes, we get big potatoes. But when we plant, all we ever get normally are small potatoes. And he said, well, what do you do with the big potatoes? And they said, we eat those big potatoes. <laughs> and we plant the small potatoes. So what was planted is what they got. So when we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, for this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Then every man according to the purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly of necessity, for God loves a cheerful gift. So let's remember that we're seed sowing, planting, and the result will be harvest for the church, harvest for the work of the kingdom. Let's go to God in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for the harvest that you've given us. And Father, we thank you for the seed you've given us. And Father, we pray for that seed that it may grow and will have an even more bountiful harvest. And this harvest will be for the work of the kingdom as well as for our benefit. Father, we ask you to bless the seed, bless the giver. And most of all, Father, we're thankful to you for what you've done. Father, we ask you all these things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise him. I love to My Jesus is the wheel. He's in the middle. The middle. Oh, you know that he'll never, he'll never, never let me down. He's just a Jew. Hallelujah, hallelujah, yeah. 
God is good. Not some of the time, but all the time, God is good. Oh, Lord. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm going to give you all the praise. Yes, somebody praise his name. We pray. Yes, Lord, we pray. Praise your name. We're thankful this morning. Lord, we praise. Lord, we praise. Praise your name. I'm thankful to this morning. Yeah. He worked it out. You worked. Yes, I'm glad you worked it out. Oh, Lord, he worked it out. He worked your sickness out. He worked your pain out. He worked it out. He worked it out. He worked it out. He worked. It out. He worked, it out. He worked, it out. He worked. I'm so glad. I'm so glad he worked. Yeah, that's why I'm here today to say, Lord, I want to thank, want to thank you. When you lost your job, he made a way. You made, yes, you made, you made a way. Lord, you made, Lord, you made. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, One more time, thank you, Lord, we thank, Lord, we thank, thank you, Lord, and yeah, yeah, we thank, Lord, we thank, thank you, Lord, yeah, Lord, we thank, Lord, we thank, Lord, we thank. Thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Got so much to be thankful for. Oh, yes. No doubt. Thankful for every day, I used to say, but I'm thankful for every minute. Because we might not see the next minute or the second, but we're thankful. Thankful, thank you. Just before the man of God comes and bless us with a mighty brief word. See back, see, see. Uh, this world, this world is not my home. Oh, I'm just, just a passing through. Don't you know that my tread, my treasures are laid up. I want to go somewhere, somewhere, where beyond the blue. Where the angels, the angels are back on me. They keep on calling me from way over there from heaven. Oh, and I can feel it in this world, in this world, in this world. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Don't you know that I am Lord, I have no friend like 
like you Said oh, way down here in this heaven If it happens or not my home Well, did, did my love Yeah, don't you know that the I know that the angels got me up They keep on calling me from a I want you to scan the audience. Media, I want you to scan the audience. Mm, like you. Mm. Yeah. Feel at home in this world. 
anymore. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. How many of y'all know this world is not our home? You're a child of God. You're a member of the Church of Christ. This world is not our home. We're just here on mission. We're here on assignment. Amen. Because we're, one day we're going back home. But we have to realize we're on assignment as, it's, as the body of Christ. And just good to, uh, for uh, to have this blessing this morning that God has blessed us. It shouldn't be a frown in the house. Amen. I said it, should be, it shouldn't be a frown in the house. God has tremendously blessed us. Uh, well, I, I might not say, I know God has tremendously blessed me. Uh, that's why I ain't got no frown. I got joy in my heart, and I got a smile on my face. I got some kicks on my feet. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah, my children, they, they, uh, they got me some, they got me these sneakers, you know, and, and uh, they got them so they'll match up with my outfit. The, the first ones were uh, a little small, and, uh, and uh, they took them back and got me these, and, and so it's, it's just matching everything, you know. And it just, uh, just matching, everything just matching, you know. They, uh, uh, yeah, uh, one and brother want to be so smart. So, brother, can you run in these sho those shoes? Can you run? You can run now. I said, well, I can run before I got the shoe. <laughs> Man, running, I got running training when I was in the hood. I learned how to run <laughs> in the hood. <laughs> Run from the police and run from the. <laughs> amen, 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 amen. We serve a mighty, mighty good God. And if God has been good to you, say amen. amen. If he has brought you from nowhere to somewhere, say amen again. Amen. Set your feet on solid ground, say amen again. Amen. If you love the Lord, say amen again. Love the Lord's church. Say amen again. Love the Lord's church. Turn to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, I love you in spite of you. Amen. I love you. I love you. And ain't nothing funny about my love. Amen. Amen. There ought not be anything funny about the love we have one for the other. We ought to have a godly love. That is a love that is in spite of and not because of. We ought to love folk in spite of how they look, in spite of what they say, in spite of what they do. We still ought to love them. Is that right? Amen, amen. I want to thank our brethren and our young brethren for uh, uh, carrying on the devotional service and one who read scripture and one who prayed and those leaders. And just to give them a big hand. Amen. Give them a big hand. We're training our young people. Amen. We, we are the, they are the church of today. Yeah, they are the church of today, and we, we are obligated as leaders to train them. Yeah, train them. And parents, you're obligated to train them too. That's why you ought to have them here. Praise that you ought to have them here in the house so they'll learn. Yeah, it'll get in their spirit. It'll become a habit. Praise the Lord. You know, you might have to drag them uh, at first and, you know, compel them or <laughs> to come, but once they come, uh, get in the habit of coming, yeah, you know, it'll just like grow on them, you know, the second thought, yeah. Uh, I know uh, Boy John said this morning, he thought that <clears throat> the name change, a time change rate rather was today. And uh, he had gotten up and got ready, I came in and said, uh, looked at me, I wasn't quite ready. He said, I thought the time changed. I said, no, it start. it's in February. We're going back to 10 o'clock. It's going to be put on, uh, it may be on our site now, but we will put it on our site. We're going back to the 10 o'clock. 9 o'clock Bible class, 10 o'clock worship. Say amen. amen. Now, if you're in the habit of coming here at 1130, 
service will be over. In <laughs> yes, yeah, so some folks, they, they come and service start at 11. They get here by 11, 30, 11, 45. And, and time for the benediction. <laughs> amen. Amen, amen. Y'all a good looking audience. Yeah, you got your shirts on. Amen. You got your shirts on and looking good. Amen. And so if you you, you, you want to get a shirt, go ahead. We got them, but you got to wait after service. Hey? Yeah. Uh, uh, now we we in, we in worship, and uh, but we're glad to see you, uh, and glad to see many of us. We have we getting back there. We 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 almost we getting back there. I give yourself an applause. The reason why I had the audience scan is because I I want to welcome those on live screen, but I'm hoping. And praying that you are planning to be in person. This is your year to be in person. Because there's nothing like being in person. Yeah, live stream is just a temporary, you know, uh, thing. But uh, uh, there's nothing like being in person. Uh, and uh, I can brag on my folk. I have my uh, mother-in-law here today. In person. Amen. In person worship. Is she still here? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. Uh, Lisa got up really early and they were here in time for Bible class. Amen. I asked, uh, but where, where the, they already gone, Dad. Amen. They already gone. Yeah. I want to thank my children for these shoes here. Yeah, I think they're trying to bribe me. <laughs> my son said, brief. <laughs> I like the word abbreviated. It'll be abbreviated. Uh, yeah, good to see Chris. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I saw him out a while, and I asked him, what's going on with Chris? And he told me, I said, I didn't know that, but he's here today. Well, Chris, amen. You know, you know why we say, you know, when you get ready. <laughs> Chris, <laughs> we're going to also um, keep in our prayers. Uh, Tiffany and the loss of her mother was funeralized on uh, yesterday in in, in, uh, in New Orleans. And I was uh, informed that uh, the Cowan's brother, they lost their brother on, uh, I think, yesterday in this past week uh, in Florida. So we want to keep that family in our prayers. Maybe others who have lost family members, uh, we wanted you to know that we we are keeping you in our prayers and that we understand that we serve a God who is all comfort to us and he will indeed comfort us in our times of grief. And all of us have time, from time to time, going to have grief and the loss of our loved ones and family members. And those who are, are struggling or fighting with an illness, we, we are praying for them uh, as well. All right, good. How many of y'all brought your Bibles today? Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. I want to give a shout out to those uh, going to our election, uh, election mission. And that's uh, Brother Bashur doing an excellent job in preaching. Those brothers go, go down to support him. And one of the reasons why we're going uh, back to our 10 o'clock worship, we're moving. Uh, the Lexington uh, uh, worship service to up uh, to uh, uh, one o'clock in their Bible class, and then two o'clock worship uh, starting in the month of February as well, so that we can get more participation from the congregation. You can have to you know have a have a abbreviated service here. We'll we'll be able to go down there and support them. Have plenty of time to do that. Yeah, amen. It is the Lord's day. And what I was taught years ago, it's the Lord's day all day. Praise the Lord. It's the Lord's day all day. Amen. Raise your Bibles again. Raise your Bibles again. All right, all right. Uh, turn to um, the scripture reading that we have lunch from the first of the year. And we'll just read Mark 9 and verse number uh, verses uh, 23 and 24. The Bible says in verse 23, Jesus said unto him, 
if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said uh, with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. Is that in your Bibles? Let us pray. Our Father and our God, is once again that we come before your throne of grace. We come with thanksgiving in our hearts and praise on our lips. For you are worthy to be praised. We're thankful most of all for Jesus Christ who gave his life that we may have life. We're thankful for the church of Christ which he purchased with his own blood. We're thankful for the gospel of Christ which indeed has the power to save the whole world. We're thankful for the gift of the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us, who teaches us, who guides us, shows us things to come. Also gives us remembrance of things that we study and gives us the power to be victorious in life. And Father, we ask now that we allow your word to have free course in our hearts, that we will receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save our souls. Use me, Father, as a vessel to proclaim your word. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It is in Jesus' holy name that we ask it all. Let the church say amen, amen, amen. We want to continue our theme for this year. And uh, we tied it in with our banner and by renewing this commitment to Christ, the church, for Jesus and great commission. And uh, we want to continue that idea uh, today because we know what the theme is, right? So what is the theme? We do, do we do know what the theme is, right? Doing great things for the Lord in 2023 by renewing my commitment to Christ, the church, the core values of Jesus, and the Great Commission. We want to do great things. And we pointed out in order to do great things, you got to have faith or belief. I want to, for a few minutes, a few minutes, speak on the subject uh, and this is a uh, subtopic to the theme and we've been doing this and just as more we see in this text we want to you know kind of bring out some things some principles and that is uh, the reward of faith the reward of faith the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Two things that exemplify faith. One is believing that God is. Believing that God is. And number two, believing that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Believing that God is and that God is a rewarder of them 
that diligently see him. I want us to see in this story that the father of this demonic boy had faith. Yes, he admitted that he had unbelief. Me to put a little attention on me because I don't want them to, they should have their Bibles. Uh, so, <laughs> amen. <laughs> you can look at the word, your Bible, instead of looking on the screen. <laughs> he prayed the Lord. <laughs> As I stated, I want us to see in this story that the father of this boy, uh, this demonic boy, had faith. Yes, he admitted that he had unbelief, but he also had belief or he had faith. If you look in verse uh, number 24, when Jesus said unto him uh, that if thou canst believe, in verse 23, all things are possible to him that believe it. And as I pointed out last week, you notice how Jesus changed from believe to believe it. Because the word believe it carries a continual action. If you just stop there at believe and not continue, uh, that belief is no better than the devil because the Bible says the devils believe and they believe to the point where they tremble. Amen. Some of us, <laughs> praise the Lord. We don't have no kind of response to what we believe. Praise the Lord. But this, this idea uh, of believing carries the idea of faith. And believe it is a continual action. That's why you see, and I pointed out last week, uh, that when Jesus told them to go preach the gospel to every creature in Mark 16, verse 15 and 16, he said, go preach the gospel to every creature. He that what? Believe it. That's continued action. And is baptized shall be saved. He that believe it and, and, and is baptized shall be saved. So that believe it carries continued action to being baptized. And then some folk want to say, well, he, he, he said that he that believe it not shall be damned. But he didn't say uh, he that believe it not and is baptized and not baptized shall be damned. Because Jesus know knew that if you didn't believe it, you're not going to get baptized. People that believe the gospel, they, they will obey the gospel. Amen. And the problem is when folk are hesitant to be baptized is because they don't believe the gospel. They've heard it, but they don't believe it. The gospel is designed to save us. But you have to obey the gospel. You have to believe it and obey it. That's why he said, go preach the gospel to every creature. Okay, who it is, everybody got to hear the gospel. Praise the Lord. The president got to hear the gospel. If you want to be saved, uh, uh, the man has to hear the gospel. If you want to be saved, the rich man has to hear the gospel. If you want to be saved, the influential man got to hear the gospel if he want to be saved. And so then that's why it's so important that do you know what the gospel is that is to be preached. And I'm always finished. Do y'all believe it? <laughs> From the look on y'all faces, from y'all response, I don't think you believe it. <laughs> but go to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Let me get a reader on that because... Uh, when someone says, uh, I asked someone, what, what do you think he wanted preached? Uh, he wanted to preach 
when he says go preach the gospel. And most folk respond by saying the word. Because uh, are not being knowledgeable of the facts of the gospel that Jesus wanted to preach. Now in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, watch this. Paul is going to tell us what the gospel is. Moreover, brethren. He said, moreover, brethren. I declare unto you the he gospel. He said, I declare unto you what? The gospel. The gospel. The Which, gospel. He said, I declare unto you the gospel. Which, what did Jesus say? Go preach. He said, preach the gospel to every creature and he that believe it what? The gospel and ill baptized shall be saved. So Paul is saying to the Corinthians, I declare unto you the gospel which I what? Preached unto, preached unto you, unto you which, also which also ye have received, received wherein, ye stand. wherein ye stand. He had preached the gospel to them. They, they had uh, received the gospel uh, uh, what he had preached and they were standing in the gospel. And, and so Paul says, he gives something else about them, more information about the gospel. He says then what? By which, By also, which also you are saved. You are saved. If if you, keep, you in keep in memory what I preached unto, what you, I preached unto you, unless, unless you, you have believed in, vain. believed in vain. So he's saying that now I preached unto you the gospel. And that same gospel is that you received, you were standing in. That same gospel that I preached unto you is the same gospel by which you are saved. If, he says, you keep in memory. Now, 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 if you don't know what the gospel is, you cannot keep it in memory. So that simply means that you're not saved. Yeah, I'm, 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 that's, the, that's the book, right? He says that by which, and that, 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 that's, that, that's to us uh, as well, because he said, if you keep it in memory, He's talking to the Corinthians. If you keep it in memory, uh, what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Yeah, when I talk to folk, you know, and I, uh, uh, those members that we, you know, we, we were trying to restore, and uh, I talked to a young lady last night, and I asked her uh, where has she been. I hadn't seen her in worship. And I heard that you had been going uh, to the word of life, a word of faith. And uh, I said, have you placed your membership over there? No, I ain't placed my membership. I said, well, did you understand when you obeyed the gospel that you became a member of the church of Christ? That you became member of the one body? which is the body of Christ. Amen. And see, that's why Paul said over Romans chapter 6 and verse number, I, uh, that, is it Romans? Yeah, chapter 6, verse number 17, he said, God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine delivered you, being then made free from sin. See, when you obey from the heart the form of doctrine, or when you obey from the heart that doctrine that was taught to you, you understand that the doctrine is that Christ died for our sins and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day. You understand that when you are baptized, you are baptized for the remission of your sins. You understand that when you are baptized, you are baptized in Christ where salvation is. You understand. I'm about to, all, I'm about to quit here, y'all. Y'all better get whipped and start saying amen. Amen. You understand. When you obey and understand the gospel, you see, you understand that baptism puts you in the body of Christ. The same baptism that saved you. The same baptism that you receive the remission of your sin. The same baptism that put you in Christ. The same baptism puts you in the church of Christ. 
Now, if you're not in the church of Christ, if you're not in Christ, you're not in the church of Christ. Praise the Lord. Thank you, brother. I hear you. Free. See, because baptism put you in the body of Christ. You see, back then, there was only one church. Didn't have a choice. And I'm going back to the preaching of sound doctrine. Oh, folk, folk joining the church now. We got folks joining church, and when they get dissatisfied and they, they don't uh, like what's going on uh, uh, at, at this church, they think they can go to another. Well, yeah, I hear them say, well, you know, my children, they got a children's church. Well, we got children's church. The children just in the same church, in the same assembly, their adults are. And some of these children, you better not turn them loose. <laughs> Yeah, they got to get used to being in the assembly. And First Corinthians chapter twelve. Let me give you some books and say a little. First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse number thirteen. First Corinthians chapter twelve. I'm almost or by finished. one spirit. Yeah, the Bible says by one spirit. Are we all baptized? That we all are baptized into one body. Into one body. Where? One body. We all are baptized into one body. All I need to find out what that one body is. Amen. Go to uh, first uh, uh, Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22, verse 23. Give me Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. Some of y'all about wondering why I'm going this route. This is what the Holy Spirit is taking. Somebody need to hear. It just seems somebody need to hear. Praise the Lord. So they can give their life to Christ and respond to the gospel. Yeah, we, we got supper planned. You don't have to be rushed in here to get out. Yeah, yeah, amen. You don't have to be rushed. We got, we got food back there. And so you don't have to be in the hurry to get the picked dick. And their food ain't as good as this food here. <laughs> so we want to find out what that one body is. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22 and 23. And somebody give me Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. Watch what the Bible says. And had put all things. And had put all things. Under his feet. Under his feet. And gave him. And gave him. To be the head. To be the head. Over all things. Over all things. That the, is Christ. To the gave church. Gave him to be head over all things. To the to church. To the church. Which is. Which is. His body. His body. So. The church is the body of Christ. That's what it's saying. Uh, the church is the body of Christ. Well, let's look at, it, at another angle. Colossians chapter 1, verse number 18. What does it say? Colossians he, chapter 1. And he is the head. And he is the head. Of the body. Of the body. The church. What is the body? The church. What is the body? The church. What is the church? The body. What is the body? The church. The church. You see, Reverend Tish, you can't miss that. The body in the church is the same thing. So when you, I'm talking to folk who have been baptized. When you leave the church, you're leaving the body of Christ. You're leaving the body of Christ. And you're leaving the protection that God gives to his body. Because you see, when you look at the physical body, all my organs, are, all my members are covered. That simply means they are protected. They are protected by skin. They're protected uh, ligaments and so forth and so on. You don't, you don't see my heart. You don't see my liver. You don't see because they protect. And so that's the more reason why if you're a member of the body, you stay in the body so you can receive the protection. What, what I love about salvation is not only did you have uh, salvation uh, from your sins and uh, have the hope of eternal life, but salvation is all inclusive. It means that you have the provisions of God. It means that you have the promises of God. It means that you have the protection of God. If you have salvation, it is all inclusive. It's not just fire insurance, but it's comprehensive. It means that you're covered. Praise the Lord, I'm covered. 
I don't know about you, but I'm covered. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Being in the body of Christ. Amen. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. So then what I showed you as I go to my seat. I know you don't believe it. But uh, I was showing you that the body and the church is the same thing. The body and the church. And the church is the body. And so when you are baptized... According to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number uh, 13, the Bible says, by one spirit are we all baptized into what? One body. One body. Where the if the body is the church, you can read it by saying, by one spirit, we're all baptized into what? One church. One church. When you're baptized, you're baptized into one body are the one church. And the Bible says, whether you be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be born or free, have been made all made to drink in the one spirit. So we understand the body is uh, the church and the church is the body. So I want you to read, uh, Neil, for me, uh, verse number, uh, what I want, verse number 20. Uh, verse number 20. But Amen. now, but now, are they many members? Are they many members? Yet, yet, but one body. But one what? Body. Body. And what is the body? Church. Is the church? So read it like, you know, that but body now, is the church. But now, but now, are they many members? Are they many members? Yet, yet, but one church. But one church. Amen. You get it at one church through baptism. But now read verse twenty-seven. As I go to my see, some of y'all need reminding of this. Praise the Lord. So you won't be drawn away with sensationalism. Amen. Because they got this big orchestra. And just because they got, you know, uh, women up there doing, uh, well, amen. Just because they got a, a children, got, got a playground, or, you know, uh, equipment out there. So your children run out there and play. Uh, just because they have plays. We have plays here too. Praise the Lord. And so then he was explaining to them. Watch this. Now read verse 27. Now. Now. Ye are the church of Christ. Now. He's talking to the Christians. Now. You are. The church of Christ. The church of Christ. And members. And members. In particular. In particular. How did it become the church of Christ? I just said that baptism puts you into one body. So I want to show you as I go to my seat uh, in Acts chapter 18, I want to show you what they did in order to become uh, members of the body of Christ or the church of Christ. I believe that that's what I want. Uh, Acts chapter 18. Turn to Acts chapter 18. If you have your Bibles, turn to Acts chapter 18. Amen. Watch what it says. Acts chapter 18. And Christmas. Uh-huh. The, yeah. ch the chief ruler. The chief ruler. Of the synagogue. Of the synagogue. Believed on the Lord. Believed on the Lord. With all his house. With all his heart. House. All his house, brother. And many. Uh-huh. Of the Corinthians. And, and what? And many. And many. Of the Corinthians. Of the Corinthians. Hearing. Uh, hearing. Watch this now. Believe. We talk about the Corinthians. Many. Mm-hmm. Of the Corinthians. Uh-huh. Watch what the Bible says. Hearing. Hearing. Believe. Believe. And. And. Were baptized. Were baptized. That's why you have over there in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. They were called. Yes. Amen. Yes. The church of Christ. Amen. Members in particular. In verse 27. Read that verse 27 again. I just showed you how. They became members of the church of Christ. That's why the, the, the baptism is so important. Watch what it say. Now. Now. Ye are. Now is the adverb of time. Now. Why now? Because you've been baptized. Before now, you were not members of the church. But now, according to Acts 18, when they heard and believed, were baptized now. Now. So you can't claim a uh, Christian until you're baptized. Yes, sir. 
and you hear them now. Hearing and believe. Is it all right, God? Is it plain enough? See, because uh, over in Acts 18, they heard, they believed, and they were baptized. So Paul said in 1 Corinthians, now. He said, now. See, Acts, uh, the Acts of the Apostles was, was written before 1 Corinthians. The Acts of the Apostles, uh, that, that is, and we call it really, is, is a historical book. Book of history. It, it, it tells us how people were converted following the Great Commission. When he told them to go preach the gospel to every creature, they went everywhere. Starting at Jerusalem. And you have an example after example of what they did in order to become members of the church of Christ. So that's why he said now. Now, you're what? The church of Christ. The church of Christ. And members. And members. In particular. In particular. Members in particular. But it all started from preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, you can hear a lot of good things on, on TV and at these churches. You can hear a lot of good things about living, but they're not preaching the gospel. And some of the best, best uh, sermons I've heard, yeah, some of the best sermons I've heard, that, 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 that boy, they can preach till your hair stand up on your head. <laughs> preach until you can jump and flip. But they're not preaching the gospel. Because everyone I hear at the end of it, they say, say this in a prayer. That is nowhere in the Bible. And I called his name. And I'm, I'm, I'm close because, you know, I don't like to call folk names, but especially in church, you know, I can call him outside church. Call, you know, I call your name. Well, he just tell you, oh, he talking about me. So I don't call no names, so you gather that I'm talking about you. <laughs> so when you come to me and say, you talking about? One thing I'm going to say, did I call your name? <laughs> I remember years ago I was preaching on the subject of busybodies. You know, the folk affairs. But I was, I was laying it out to Busybody. What is a busybody? It's a body that's busy. And the other folk are fans. Nosy folk. Want to know everybody else's business. Need to mind their own business. Praise the Lord. When I got through preaching, sister jumped up. Ah! I thought she was shouting over my sermon. <laughs> she said, oh, Brother Pippa called me a busybody. Her husband sitting right beside her said, <laughs> Some creatures just respond better. You know? <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> and, and, and so the point is, it's important that we hear the gospel. Among, that, that's the first thing you ought to hear. Yeah, all those other things are good. But you know, the one book of Acts gives us the information how people obeyed the gospel, how they became Christians, and then the letters were written to those who were already children of God. Now, how to live. Isn't that wonderful? And so when we understand what the gospel is, when you obey the gospel, that you receive, when you obey the gospel, that's first of all hearing the gospel, believing the same. Repenting of your sins, confessing Christ to be the Son of God, and then being baptized in water for the remission of your sins in order to be saved, in order to get your sins washed away, in order to become a child of God. First Peter chapter what? 
3 and uh, 21, Paul said, Peter said, the light figure where under baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but is an answer of a good conscience toward God. Why is an answer to a good conscience toward God? Because when you are baptized, all of your sins have been washed away. When you are baptized, you become a member of the church of Christ. When you are baptized, amen, you become a child of God. When you are baptized, you get benefit of the blood of Jesus Christ because I believe in uh, second, uh, well, Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 12, it says that we are buried with Christ baptism and that God performs an operation. In other words, he cuts our sins away. He, he takes a scalpel, a, 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 a spiritual scalpel, and he cuts our sins away. And when we come out of that water, we are a new creature in Christ. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. When we are baptized, we are baptized in the church of Christ. I know it's the church of Christ because it belonged to Christ. I know it's the church of Christ because he, he bought it with his own precious blood. I know it's the church of Christ because the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, he gave himself for it. I know it's the church of Christ because one day he's coming back. Amen. He's not going to set foot on this earth, but he's going to, uh, amen, he's going to be in the air. The Bible says, every yeah, eye going to see him and those that who have died in the Lord or in Christ, they're going to be caught up together in the air first. And those that are alive, we're going to go up together with them and we're going back to be with the Lord. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the Bible says, Christ, when he get back to heaven, he's going to present the kingdom to the Father. Amen. And he's going to... Uh, subject himself to the Father and then the kingdom will be turned over to God because we will be God's children. We will be praising him. If I can't get no shout out of church folk, I don't know what, amen. That's when we will be ever be with the Lord. That's why I'm not afraid of death. Death is just a front transition. Yeah, I'm not afraid of death. See, those of you have been afraid of death and fearful of dying, let me, let me drop it. All the folk that Jesus healed and the apostles healed, they died. And the last one of them. And the man that Jesus raised from the dead, Lazarus, he died. Again. Okay. And matter of fact, even before he died, the devil was grabbing forever, you wanted to kill him. <laughs> and so, so you got a hope in the church. You got a hope. And that is, brother said, the hope of glory, the hope of eternal life. Yeah, yeah. But we have, we have all God's blessings right now. Right now in the church, you don't have to go outside the church. Praise the Lord. I was going to get to that, but, I know. but I'm going to close. Sit on your feet. If you are a member of the church, you ought to be, you ought to be proud. You ought to hold your head up and say, thank you, Jesus. For saving a wretch like me. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for me. Thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for me. Thank you, Lord, for taking a whipping for me. Thank you, Father, for uh, giving us Jesus, and thank you, Jesus, for allowing men, wicked men, put nails in your hands and nails in your feet and uh, hang you high and drop your law on the cross. Thank you that you stayed on the cross. 
And you did it for me. So that I can have the righteousness of God. Not my own individual life of righteousness. But the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And I don't know about you. Every, every, every day I think about the past. Then I think about the present. And I think about the future. Listen, it just caused me to be shout. Caused me to shout. Amen. Because I'm protecting all this violence going on in the world. Praise the Lord. Things that are going on. And you're not in Christ. Meaning that you're without God. Have no hope. You're without God in the world. That's what the condition of Gentiles before they got in Christ. So maybe someone here today who are not in Christ. Who, and if you're not in Christ, you're not in the body of Christ, you're not in the church of Christ. And that you want to. Say, it, it, it got to be a want to. Yeah, because people do anything they want to do. Yeah, yeah. That's where they believe come in, faith come in. Yeah, yeah they do what they want to. And uh, I mean, the brother was talking the other day. He was talking about, we were talking about different people and how they, you know, were not committed. I said, well, you know, we can want for people more than they want for themselves. And see, God can want for us more than we want for ourselves. God want all men to be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. But he can want for us, and he do want for us many times more than we want for ourselves. So you got to want salvation. Jesus said, whosoever will, let him come. You know, I don't, I don't try to put no folk in, nobody in no headlock. Try to bring them, you know. No, no. He just said, whosoever will, let him come. It has to be your desire. Because when you come, you're saving yourself. And you know what the awful thing about Dying is that that's not all it is. Because the Bible says it's after death to judgment. After judgment. We have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And we won't have to give an answer for what we've done in this life. Whether it be good or bad. Now, what the thing would be the tragic thing is that you hear the gospel and you have opportunity to obey the gospel and you never do. And when you get on the other side, you got memory that how close you came, but you never did. Then you won't have a second chance. You're in eternity now. Have you ever read Luke 16? Where the rich man, when he found out where he was, he was in hell. He was tormented in the flame. And uh, he wanted to be a missionary. Said, send Lazarus back to my brothers, and so they won't come to this place. And uh, what he was told was, they got Moses and the prophets, and if they won't listen to them, they're not going to listen to one come from the dead. So what he's saying, if you don't listen to me, praise the Lord. God, God ain't got no, uh, no other supposed to fight you. And you have that to remember the rest of your life eternal throughout all eternity. Wouldn't that be sad? Eternity, never ending. Never ending. And you just remember that you came that close, but you didn't obey. 
But on the other side, we got Lazarus. The Bible says he was in Abraham's bosom. And Jesus called that place paradise. And so uh, he was enjoying paradise. Let me, let me, let me drop this number on definitely close. I don't know how that five or six or what I mean. But I'm still abbreviating. Let, let me drop this. Because we are made in the image of God, there's a part of us that will never die. That's what it, never die. You're going to have your memory. You're going to have your faculties. You're going to be able to feel. You're going to be, amen. You're going to be able to talk. But you, you don't just won't have nobody. Because we were made in God's image. And that part. That we made an image of God, it never dies. It never dies. And some folks think it, well, it's all over. Uh, and they're committing suicide. No, you, you made the voice mistaken. You could ever make kill yourself. You think you're killing yourself. No, you ain't killing yourself. You're killing the body. But you wake up, when you wake up out of the body, your eyes gonna be open. You don't have your mind. What you trying to do, preacher? I'm trying to get you to obey the gospel at the time. Praise the Lord. If you're here today and you're a member of the Lord's church, stay in the church. Be faithful. Because he said, if you be faithful, I'll give you a crown of life. But you got to be faithful. I don't care about COVID or anything else that's going on. God said, be faithful. Even if it costs you, be faithful. I'll give you a crown. A life that fades in other way. Is that all right? You got my song. Let me take some. Will you come to the fire? Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? You and me. This is so. Don't be ashamed to come. Don't be afraid to come. Jesus said, whosoever will. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Oh. Will you come? Will you come? To the God bless you. God bless you. Will you come? Don't be ashamed to come. Don't be afraid to come. Jesus said, whosoever will, let him come. Thirsty soul, his soul, heal the well. There is a found. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, it's hard for all. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, don't be afraid to come. Jesus is calling. Whosoever will, let him come. It has to be your will to come to Christ. You have to have this desire. Peter said, save yourself from this untoward generation. They that gladly received the word, they were baptized. The same day, they were added to them about 3,000 souls. Oh, is there another? Is there another? someone here that need prayer. You may be going through some situation in your life. The circumstances may be difficult. Will you come? Will you come? And me thirsty soul thirsty soul
there someone here that want to recommit their lives to Christ? Recommit your life to the, the church and, and to the core values of Jesus and the Great Commission. You, you want to recommit, you allow COVID, you allow circumstances and, and situations cause you to drift away. You ought to make up your mind. I'm recommitting my life to Christ in 2023. 23, 23 is going to be a better year. Amen. I'm going to give my life. 2023 is going to be a better year. How many of y'all want 2023 to be a better year than 2022? Well, it takes commitment. It takes commitment because God is a rewarder. He's a rewarder. I know he rewards faith. You got to have faith if you want him to reward. God, God bless you. Time, one time. Is there another? Is another? Still have time? Let the church say amen. amen. Let's give Brother Pippen a lot of positive, powerful sermon, gospel sermon this morning. Thank you for that message on this morning. Uh, the message has pricked the one. We're going to ask Brother Pippen to come back up and take the confession of one Tony Causey. Alexia, I don't want to miss her name because I don't want to call her a nickname. <laughs> Alexia, uh, husband, and he wants to put Christ on the baptism. Let's give him a love of positive. Amen, amen, amen. We uh, we had a class with Tony this past week and, and explained to him uh, about the gospel and, and his commitment uh, to Christ. And, uh, and he responded uh, very responsive to it. And uh, at the end of the class, he said, well, I asked him, are you ready, ready to be baptized? He said, I want to be baptized. Amen. And I'm sure that he wanted all you to see. When we have young people giving their lives to Christ, we know the angels of heaven is rejoicing. Amen. They're rejoicing. And uh, this is something that I'm sure his wife been wanting. She's been asking me, what are you talking about? Are you talking about? <laughs> so, Tony, we want to ask you one question. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? This confession brought death unto him. But after you've completed your obedience in baptism, in the water grave of baptism, all your sins will be washed away and you become a new creature in Christ, in the body of Christ, the church of Christ. All that stuff, all that stuff you've done, amen. They can't bring it up no more. Amen. Said so you're a new man, a new creature, amen. Uh, I praise the Lord. Who are these? Okay, brother. Okay, and. Mom, oh, praise the Lord. Let's give Lord of Father. Brother and Mom here to witness uh, him being baptized. Praise God. God is good, isn't it? Amen, amen. Amen. Also, um, in advance of that, also, um, Sister Linda Harris and her husband Danny Harris, let's just come back some prayers uh, for their aunt and a cousin who's dealing with some medical issues, so just asking God to heal their bodies as they go. Uh, through some medical situations. Let's give them a love deposit. Amen. And then um, also, uh, 
Brother and Sister Mallory just coming on behalf of, uh, she's asking prayers for her grandson and her daughter. And all those that may have fallen away from the church, we know that several have kind of fallen away during the time of uh, COVID. Some have left, and she's just asking they will all come back to the faith before it's too late. So we'll be asking for prayer. Amen. Let's give them a little applause. <laughs> then also, uh, Brother C.J. Nichols just asking prayers as he uh, traveled back uh, to college uh, uh, this week, asking prayers for Travis Grayson as he started a new semester. Also, he has a prayer of Thanksgiving, so he's got a, a job there in, in Starkville there at the Mississippi State that he didn't think he would forget, but he's just, by the grace of God, he was able to get that job. He's excited about it, so let's give him a little deposit. Amen, 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 amen. And then also, uh, Brother D. Thompson, just prayer of Thanksgiving as well, so he was involved in the accident on this past week, and as you can see, he's well and up here, and got this cowboy stuff on and all that stuff, so doing well. Just a prayer of Thanksgiving <laughs> for that, and also praying for the other person that was involved in the accident as well. So, all right. Oh, yeah. And also, also uh, he had some prayers for his father, uh, Brother David Jackson there in Oxford. Uh, his mother uh, passed on this past week, so we'll be praying for that family and his grandmother, obviously. We'll be praying uh, for healing for that family during that time of bereavement. I tell you, this morning has just been, just been wonderful, hasn't it? And a great service, great service, great message, Brother Pittman. Great, great message. Uh, you said the Holy Spirit led you in that direction. He couldn't have led you in a better direction this morning. And we're grateful to you. Just grateful to you as being a minister and and uh, the knowledge that you have and the commitment that you have. You know, we're grateful to, for you. We really are, Brother Pittman. We mean that sincerely. Um, it's just good to see, you know, this reminds me, the numbers that are in the audience this morning uh, reminds me of pre-COVID. And, you know, give yourselves a hand for coming out uh, this morning. And, and we hope that the numbers will continue to increase. And I'm sure we have some visitors in the aud audience this morning. And we appreciate you uh, being with us uh, this morning. And if you have any questions regarding anything that was shared from Bible class on through worship, we're here to answer your questions, uh, your Bible questions. We'll give you Bible answers, I promise you that. All right, so in addition to those that, uh, that Neil mentioned, we have uh, Tanisha uh, White who has come, and she is praying that God will keep her, and these are her words, that will keep her guided in the right direction. And certainly, if you keep God first in your life, he'll certainly do that for you, Tanisha. And let's give uh, her a love deposit at this time. And then we have our father, Brother, Pritt, Brother Charles White, who's come. He says, thank God uh, for blessing us with a house uh, here close to the church uh, that we can conveniently be, uh, conveniently be here uh, when we need to be here. And he says, I am praying uh, for forgiveness of sins as well. We'll certainly be doing that on your behalf, Brother White. Also, Brother Mallet has come, and Brother Mallet is asking prayers on behalf of, uh, he says, their mothers, I believe it's Brother uh, Mallet's mother in uh, Sister Malice's mother as well, uh, who are both ill, and he's asking for prayers on their behalf. And we're going to ask Neil, if you will, to give us a prayer on behalf of those who responded this morning. Uh, also, I think Brother Pittman had mentioned it this morning, but also, in case you weren't here, we'll be praying for the uh, Sister Ransom and Sister Cowan. They lost their brother, I believe, on yesterday or this past week. So we'll be praying for that family as well. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, God. We thank you for the message that had pricked the heart of those you see standing before us. But most importantly, we pray for the one that made the best decision he ever made in his life by making deciding to, to come into a relationship with Jesus Christ. So we thank you for him. God, we pray for those that are dealing with medical issues, medical situations, that you would be there to strengthen them, bless them back to a normal state of health and strength. We pray for those um, that are dealing with the loss of loved ones. God, I pray that your Holy Spirit will guide them and comfort them uh, through their time of, of bereavement. And just pray. Pray for those that may have fallen away uh, from the faith, God, that you would uh, prick their hearts, prick their spirit, that they would come back to the faith before it's everlasting and turn too late. We just pray that for us as brothers and sisters in Christ, that we would be there to support and encourage them throughout this time. May God bless you, Son, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Who's going to be responsible to take uh, Tony, go with Tony?
as they prepare Tony for uh, baptism. Let's give Brother Tony another a love deposit for that decision to put Christ on in baptism. Y'all see, this is a big family. This is, it's a family affair, a family Amen. thing. Amen. And they're going over to witness the baptism. Uh, and now, uh, over on the other side, we do have a pool over on the other side. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right, just before we uh, close out with the benediction, we want to uh, acknowledge, and, and uh, you saw Tony's uh, mother and his brother, Linda, and Jeremy Causey, they just stepped out with them, but let's give them a love deposit. And then uh, I have a card here also for uh, Danny Harris uh, and uh, Madison Owen. Uh, this is a uh, guest of Linda Harris and George Berry. Uh, will you wave your hand that we can see you? They're the one that came. Okay, gotcha. All right, okay. Those are all the only cards that I had, but I saw a few more guests, and I didn't know if I didn't get the card or, or not, but uh, we want to give uh, uh, love to each of our guests. So if there are any more to my left, if you'll just uh, stand where you are, wave your hand, we will uh, acknowledge you and, and show you Hanging Moss love. Are there any to my left here? Okay, we have one right here. Okay, and your two granddaughters. Amen. Amen. Uh, Ursus, can we get them a card that we can uh, uh, have a record of, of their being with us? Didn't want them to have to yell out, but I appreciate you acknowledging yourself. Now that this side knows that it doesn't hurt, uh, do we have any guests on this side? It didn't hurt. It didn't hurt, did it, sis? Okay. Do we have any guests on this side? Let us see who you are that we can show you Hanging Moss love. Any in the overflow? Okay, let's give all of our guests a love deposit. <laughs> Just one last appeal, because when I saw Tony, you know how you see people, they're so committed and dedicated and you think they already have obeyed the gospel? There are some more out there. Husband, wife, come to Christ. One is already in, the other one is contemplating. If you got any questions, every Bible question deserves a Bible answer. But let us make that. You do your part, and God will do his part, and the Bible will give you the answer that you need. Just want to make that appeal. Yes, sir. Okay, well, I'll be more than happy to do that. I was just about to. <laughs> uh, just before we close out, just want you to be mindful of the fact that um, um, it says, reminder to the Black History Committee members, we'll meet for about 15 minutes after church today. Uh, please make plans to attend. And this comes from uh, Carolyn Upkins. Uh, so uh, for those, those committee members, you'll be meeting right after church. Uh, also, uh, for Sister Betting Field, uh, sisters, get ready for our annual gratitude class on next Sunday at 5 o'clock via Zoom. Sister Lisa Pittman will give words of encouragement. Uh, so let's be, uh, get excited and, and ready for that. God has blessed us to see 2023, and we know you all have something to share. So the uh, annual gratitude class on next Sunday at 5. Also, um, Brother Pittman, will we be, will you be addressing the group at the fellowship? The, the uh, church at the fellowship? The one we're about to have. Immediately after service, we'll be having a fellowship. Third Sunday fellowship, and, and you're all invited yeah. to be a part of the meal. Y'all just fellowship. Okay. We got a meal plan <laughs> uh, for you. Those who may not stay, I think they're going to have carry out as well. Uh, we want our seniors uh, to go first, you know, and our guests. They want to be, you know, and then we are members. Yeah, following in behind, I guess. And uh, along that line, we have been provided uh, uh, two sisters, uh, Carolyn and Carolyn uh, Upkin. They have done the desserts, and they just desired that everybody get one. So if you'll just be considerate and get one, 
and then after everybody has gotten a taste, then you you know if there are any more, come back and, and get uh you know you're welcome to. Uh, yeah, that will be service, I'm sure. Sir, that will be service. I'm sure. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, just just I'm just doing like I'm at. Those of us who know those desserts, we don't want to give you no hint. Somebody said. <laughs> Uh, I want to also give uh, accolades to you. We already have our Black History decorations up. I want to thank my, my son and his wife, uh, Sean. They, they was over here uh, doing the decorations, everything. They got, they got everything look, looking good. We want to thank them uh, for their work and their efforts as well. And we, uh, I don't know it was announced earlier, but uh, Wayne and his family uh, uh a family's fighting COVID, they're doing well, doing good. And uh, Wayne is there and the family's there just, you know, quarantined. So that's why they are not out of here. They even get a chance to go down to the funeral. Uh, so to keep uh, uh, Tiffany and the family in prayer and also the Herbie family as well. Amen. Uh, just as Brother Mad I mean, uh, Brother Madison makes his way forward to give us the benediction. Just want to remind you that the first Sunday in February, we're starting with the uh, 9 a.m. Bible class and the 10 a.m. worship. And in Lexington, we will be having a 1 o'clock uh, uh, Bible class and a 2 o'clock uh, worship. Let us be standing for the benediction. And then just want to give also accolades to uh, Sister Stribbling, who uh, made the t-shirts, and also my wife in the design of uh, uh, of the church. This is our official emblem here, right here, right here. And this is our official emblem. And you, we want folk to be proud uh, of being a member of the Church of Christ, number one, but also be proud of your local congregation, which is hanging out with the old Church of Christ. Amen. Because we're not uh, a head stepping in, in, in with nobody. Amen. We first class all the way. Amen. First class all the way. You got a first class preacher. You got a first class leadership. You got a first class membership. Can't nothing be but first class. Benediction. Grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with each of us until we meet again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. I don't know how they got going to